I'm Chrissy and you are watching The Chrissy B Show. Let me tell you what's in store for today's show. I'll be speaking to Dr. Rob Hicks about staying healthy this summer. We'll also be taking a look at my latest place to visit, which was Rye Castle Museum. We'll also have our weekly makeup and fashion tips by the Gregoire sisters. And we have a fitness tip from Jane Rafter on exercises to do with a stability ball. And I'll also be answering a question from one of you guys at home. But first of all, we have the news with Excel. Hello, Excel. Hello, Chrissy. How or are you? Or should I say Chris today? As you're oh, looking yeah. <laughs> very beautifully androgynous, I Thank have to you. say. Thank you. It's a different look today, completely. Absolutely. Very Courtesy nice. of our stylist, Cynthia. I know. I'm looking forward to that later. I'm sure <laughs> she'll talk about it as usual. Definitely. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm sort of surviving the heat today. If I'm honest, because oh, I've... yeah, it was a bit warm. Ooh. What do you do, have for don't us? Don't do warm. But um, <laughs> in in the in the theme of all the warmness that's around us, I think um, the future of fashion is here for mm. men. Oh, and following on with your theme today, my first bit of news has to do with how men cope with the soaring temperatures um, in London, because we're hitting mm. the high twenties nowadays and everything. And so um, men decided to take fashion just that little bit edgier. My first shot here. Oh no, you shows, um, you know, men in short shorts. I mean, why do women get to wear hot pants and shorts and men can't? And they all have to, you know, sort of dress up in their suits. A, and, yeah, he's a wearing a long a sleeve shirt. Yeah. And a suit. And a jacket. So why is he wearing shorts with because that? Because he's hot. If he was, if, if, okay, I'm not gonna say And anything. I mean, second picture, please. Because I mean, it, it shows no. diversity, <laughs> shows style. We have a trendy <laughs> man there Sorry. with lovely That's socks. Horrible. And, Imagine your boss walking around like that, seriously. I mean, I would say my boss is trendy and brave. I mean, I don't know. What would you, would you let, let your husband dress? Look, look at this one, particularly stylish. Look not. at him, it's like, he's looking like an well, Italian Were they where they're just putting them out there and just seeing people's reactions? Well, see, but come on now. This, <laughs> people are actually amused by what's going on here, but... Um, That's terrible. Well, you guessed it, actually, Chrissy. It was for fun. Oh. This was something that was sponsored by Channel 4. Oh, really? Because they had their new, what they call short films, and they call uh -huh. it shorts. So they were just advertising this in line for the summer because they do like mm. four minute um, clips on different things. You know, there's fashion, food, um, drama, sort of short, short, basically short dramas, short things. So they uh -huh. were just focusing on that and highlighting that. So, oh. yeah, so these, um, those were models, and they, um, I think they did the job very well, actually. Good. <laughs> not a look that I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on from that, um, um, from that shocking fashion um, <laughs> slot there, the next thing I want to focus on is this bride. I know we talk about brides <gasps> losing weight all the time, etc., etc. But this one was quite um, a bit of a sad-ish story because Chloe Dodds, she um, unfortunately was a size twenty, a size thirty. She was twenty-one stone eight because she had a diet of sugary cereals and um, pizzas and chips and oh, all that. Yeah. And so she ballooned into quite, you know, size 30. She had to order her gown from the, from the States. And unfortunately, on her wedding day, with everybody gathering around to see who the bride was that was um, coming out, people actually jeered at her. No. And, oh, you know, they actually said to her, you look awful, fat bride, you know, and all of that. You look so fat in that dress. And then she actually broke down in tears. Oh, actually, the, I know the, the, the her walking up the aisle was actually delayed because she spent some time crying. But she said it broke her heart. But who was it that was, was being honored? The public. As oh, in the general people, public. The general public who had seen her coming into, I suppose, coming out of the car, maybe. Oh, or right, it didn't okay. say when exactly, but I think it must have been her coming out of the car. So cool. Because they said the ceremony had to be halted for her mm -hmm. to, she was actually crying for about 15 minutes. But I always love a good story that ends happily ever after. She got back to them, got back at them, I should say. And um, because when she saw her photo, for, for her wedding photos as well, she thought, oh my gosh, this is dreadful. So now she has lost, she lost three stone before then having a gastric bypass and her weight has now dro dropped to 10 stone, 12. Oh. So she's now a size 12 as opposed to a size 30. Oh, wow, was that her dress? So that's her against oh. her, her former wedding dress, yeah. yeah. And so now she looks up. And, and, the good, and the good thing as well about it was that she also had type 2 diabetes as a result of her weight. So now oh, with the weight loss okay. and everything, she's shed that. She's, she's no longer, um, she's been she's um, cleared. She's medically cleared. I know, I think, I think it's, it's one of those kind of things that should happen, you know, yeah. get, a, get a renewal of vows. But That'd the husband nice. says also he's very proud of her and um, to be able to do that. And it took her two years to lose the weight. 
fabulous. Wow, well done. Um, I'd like to show a short clip now for my next okay. news story. So um, let's take a look at this. a child though. that baby i just love the way the baby was the baby looking was like what again. is your problem i don't know what you're talking about i'm just happy here <laughs> but she was really taking it seriously like, yeah. but you're so cute <laughs> i don't want you to grow up it's just i just thought oh if only like that was the only thing we could ever worry about not growing <laughs> old you know it comes with older responsibilities and everything but i just thought it was quite yeah. endearing so i came across that and i thought i had to share it with your viewers because it was just absolutely and how, lovely. how many views did that get i tell you at the time I found it, it was just three days old on YouTube and it had 18 million views. Wow. And as yeah. at now, it has, I think, what was the figure? 32 million now, Gosh. I believe it stands at. 32 million. It's just mind blowing. <laughs> but it just shows how cute. It's just like just simple things, the way, yeah. you know, simple thing, the way a, a, the, a child's mind just works on the simple things. The baby was things. cute, though, I can understand. Oh, oh, absolutely, I It's agree. like, when you, get a, like when you get a little kitten and you just want it to stay that size and they grow up so quickly and they're not so cute anymore, I suppose. <laughs> Especially when they start scratching you. Yes. <laughs> <But> anyway. <laughs> We've got a couple of minutes left, Excel. Yeah, a couple of minutes. Okay, we can talk about something um, quite hilarious, actually. Um, a, an airline, a, a, a customer was um, had complained about airline, well, United Airlines um, company, the, the uh, what do you call it? Ph phone, phone company? <laughs> airline company, there you go. <laughs> United Airlines from the States. And um, he complained to the company about his experience mm -hmm. and basically saying he hadn't had a <clears throat> pleasant um, trip or flight or whatever. But then the customer care manager decided to send him a letter to say, you know, to apologize as you do. But then all the man got was a default letter. So it just kind of shows that they put their caring or their sort of um, apologies in a set pattern. So what he got was a standard letter, but the <laughs> poor manager, the customer care manager did not even take the effort to put the, to block things, to put things in. Because if you look at it, it says here, um, thank you for writing to us about your experience. And it says, our goal is to provide, you know, um, a, 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 what do you call it? A, to provide, oh, I can't see that from this far. But instead get of, up then. Go, instead go, of putting, go on, I'll get up, I'll get up and I'll have a look right, at it. We can do this. It says, it says <laughs> here, our goal get is to provide a consistently reliable product and an exemplary level of customer service. Based on the events you described, we did not meet this goal. And your, commit, your comments regarding, in brackets, specific event, instead of putting obviously what had happened, will be used for coaching and training our employees. As a tangible means of acknowledging your disappointment, enclosed is, in brackets, specific item. And then it says in brackets again, customer name, we would like to apologize, blah, 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 and hope you travel with us next time. And he signed it and sent it to this man without <laughs> even looking to say, Let's insert the actual <laughs> item. And of course, it went on social media. And as I love the social media, everybody was sort of specific abuse word, United <laughs> Airlines. And it was just literally, people were just taking the mick yeah. out of it because they, you know, the person hadn't even bothered and signed that. And mm, Maybe not he was just move. tired and he didn't notice. You know how these things happen. Didn't notice, really. Mm -hmm. Insert specific item here. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Never mind. Oh gosh, but um, do we have time for one more, or shall uh, we just Can you wait? do one in a minute? Oh no, I don't want no, to rush all right, it. So let, let's let's not rush this. The next news item, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's very interesting. Oh, it so thank you so much. You're going to join us a bit later on too. Okay, so do stay tuned because after the break, we'll have Jane Rafter's fitness tips on exercise to do with a stability ball, and I'll also be speaking with Dr. Rob Hicks about staying healthy this summer. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter.
Welcome back to the show. Now, before we go over to Rob with some summer health tips, let's take a look at this fitness tip from Jane Rafter on exercises to do with a stability ball. Hi everyone, I'm Jane and on our fitness top tips today I'm going to show you some exercises to do on a stability ball which you can get anywhere, sports shops or online, just google stability ball, they're really cheap and they're such great um, exercise tools to help you really target your muscles. What I'm going to show you today is a shoulder bridge on a ball which is a Pilates exercise. So you put your feet up on the ball, then you tilt your pelvis and you lift one vertebra at a time. Now what you'll see is that I'm constantly shifting, I'm having to balance on the ball and that is really good for your, your core muscles to have to work to balance. And then I'm going to roll back down through the spine. I'm going to do that again for you. So you tilt and lift, nice deep breath. This is really good for your back by the way. And if you want to target the backs of the legs and really strengthen up the backs of the legs, you can add this. So you lift up and you pull the ball in and push it away. And if you do about four or five of these, you'll feel these muscles start to work. Because the interesting thing is mostly, we just stretch here, don't we, all the time. We work the front and we stretch the back. But this will really strengthen the back of your thighs. So that's a really excellent exercise on the ball. Another one for the inner thighs. Lots of people ask me how they can tone up their inner thighs. If you take a ball like this and squeeze it, you can pop your hands under your bum if that feels more comfortable and just squeeze it. Now that is already targeting the inner thighs. If you want to add some lower abs, you can lift and lower and lift, squeezing the ball all the time. If you want to add something for your upper abs here, you can add a sit up. So I'm lifting from the top end and the bottom end of my tummy and I'm squeezing the ball all the time. Really good exercise that for your tummy and your legs. So guys, enjoy your ball and I will see you next time. Thank you very much to the lovely Jane. And now I'm here with Rob to talk summer health. Hello, Rob. Hi there. I, How I, are you? Well, I'm fine. I, I feel after Excel's news, I should have been wearing shorts. No, please don't. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> How have you been then? I've been well, I've been well. I've been Good. enjoying the good weather like everybody else, yeah. but I'm also very concerned when I, you know, I walk around the parks and things, see people getting very sunburned, mm. you know, not yes. realising that maybe the backs of their shoulders or indeed you know, other parts of their body are getting sunburned. Are oh, you ever tempted to go up to them and say something? I have done on occasion. Oh, you have actually? I have done. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm very acutely aware of the, of the risks yeah. of skin cancer. Yeah. And, and uh, I, warm, I say to people, look, you know, you know that you're going red and you can't see because it's behind and you're really going to feel it later on. And you, you know, so yeah. think about covering up and protecting your skin. And nine times out of ten, I've been doing it two or three times, particularly with children, mm, you know, with yeah, parents yeah. with small children. They're, they're very receptive. They're very grateful for the, for the advice rather than saying, mm. you know, mind your own business. I think sometimes parents are more careful about putting the lotion on their children, they seem to forget about themselves, I think, don't I they? Think so. So. Yeah, I think so. And, and what you often find is that, um, is that the children do it, you know, almost happy. They have it as a routine. Yeah. And what, you, what we want is children to say, Mummy, Daddy, don't forget to do yeah. yours. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's a good one. Because, <laughs> of course, the number of cases of skin cancer in the UK yeah. is just going up and up and up. And this is a preventable disease. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's over, over 100,000 new diagnoses of, of skin cancers oh every year in the UK. It's terrible, so it? it's important to, to be very aware. Yeah. Okay, guys, make sure you put your suntan cream on. So it's got, you know, yeah. we've, got, we've got a couple of you know, bottles there mm -hmm. that we should be using, and the idea is to put it on before 30, about 30 minutes before you go outside. And remember to put it on every couple of hours because, of course, we sweat and it comes mm. off. Or you might, get, you, know, you might be on holiday and you go in the sea or in the, in the pool and it comes off, so you need to reapply it. Yeah. Um, and also to, to do put it on because sometimes you might think oh because I'm not actually going to the park or anything I'm you say I'm just going to work but your arms are exposed for example yeah. so you still need to like it's not just holidays on. I mean people are getting better when they're on holiday or weekends you know days yeah. out on the weekend but you're you're right you know every day you go into work you might be in short sleeves you might be in shorts as yeah. we saw earlier um, <laughs> you've got to make sure that you protect you do, yourself definitely. even on cloudy days the UV will come through yeah. and it will it will damage the skin and remember okay. that a tan is damaged skin. You know, a suntan is a, is a skin that's been damaged. Gosh, okay. 
That's good to know, Rob. Yeah. It's not healthy glow, as no, they say. Not. No, it's no. not. If you want glow. a tan, fake it. Yeah, fake it. There you go. <laughs> One reason to fake it. Okay, what's the next thing? That you so uh, what else? You know, people are, are going away on a holiday. What, what are they likely to suffer with apart from the sunburn? Um, certainly dehydration, mm -hmm. uh, food poisoning. Um, they may find themselves getting bitten by, it might be mosquitoes, it might be wasps, it might, it might be ants, it might be bees. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the sort of thing that I always travel with. You know, it's in a clear bag, a very right. attractive clear bag. Because <laughs> nowadays, of course, when you fly, you can't have yeah, it in a, yeah, in a hidden sure. bag. So in here, I always, I always move around with antihistamines that deal with itching, mm -hmm. something to stop diarrhea in case, you know, I should pick up a bug. Um, Painkillers, you know, some anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. um, and things that people often forget about is um, travel sickness. So you know, travel sickness tablets, um, and I'm a great fan of the you know the the acu you know pressure bands that you put round, and they they press on one of the acupressure points, and they're very very good. I've never seen those before. Yeah, so they. Oh, they, so are they supposed to stop? They, they, they've got a little button on them, as, okay. as you see there, and that presses on a certain acupressure point here, uh -huh. which helps uh, relieve nausea. You find that oh, women who know. are getting morning sickness, for example, in yeah. pregnancy, they benefit from them. But the travel sickness in particular, whether you're in a car, mm -hmm. whether you're on a plane, whether you're on a boat, so you can take your medicines, you can use the acupressure bands, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, Position, try and position yourself in the best place. So if you're in a car, you need a good, clear view of the yeah. road ahead. Don't sit there with your, with your head down. Because travel sickness occurs because the messages that are coming to the brain from the eyes uh -huh. and the balance mechanism in the ears are different. So the brain isn't sure what's going on. Oh, you feel upset and, you, yeah. and then of course, you know, spools, spools the beginning of a holiday, certainly. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. great tip there. Yeah. Okay. And first aid kit. You know, it doesn't have to be huge. I mean, this is probably slightly more th more than you need. But what I've got in here is is, okay. is a range of creams. So there's an antihistamine cream. There's a there's an anti-inflammatory cream. There's some antiseptic. You know, bandages, plasters. Mm -hmm. It doesn't um, take up much space, does it? No, it doesn't. Small. You know, and there's a an, you know an alcohol uh, wash there for mm -hmm. when you're away from soap and water and taps, and okay. you need to keep your hands clean. So all those sorts of things. And if you're traveling to Europe, try and get one of these. It's the it's the free European health insurance card that if you're in European countries and you get ill, like you need hospital treatment, it will help cover the costs of those. Oh, and where if do you get those from? You go you? online, if they're free, you go online, get, send in your details, and they'll send you the card oh, in the post. Okay. That and of course, really you know, know that. that's, you know, in, in addition to travel insurance if you've got it. But the right. bottom line is all this sort of stuff. Hopefully you won't need it and you'll have a jolly nice holiday. <laughs> and the hats, of course, too. Don't Definitely forget the hats. This is one of my favourites. This is my favourite, obviously, because it's got the bit at the back. You want me yes, to put it on? Yes, yes, I yeah, do. On, <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to spoil so your hair or anything. Where we are, which <laughs> there we go. See, look, like you're going fishing or something. Ooh, I'm like Deputy Dog from the cartoon there. But you see, covers the face, but yeah. it's got that bit at the back. Yeah, that's really good. Because it's off in the back of the neck, you know. Um, oh, I wish yeah. someone to take a picture I'll of me. <laughs> put it back on there, Jip. So while you're doing that, I'd just yeah. like to ask, because once when I went, it was the first holiday that I was having, he's posing for a picture while there we show it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, on my well. yeah, my first holiday with my husband, he was my boyfriend at the time, so we went to Kenya, and I bought one of these, um, I don't know if you've ever seen them, I got it from a well-known shop, I was gonna say, and it's for like, if you get bitten by something. So I took it along on our holiday, and nothing happened for like three weeks, we uh, spent a week on, safar um, on safari, first of all, and then two weeks in Mombasa, and I never got to use the kit, which was quite good, I didn't actually wanna have to use it. But then on the last days we were leaving, we were sitting having breakfast and something fell out of a tree and landed on my husband's neck and it was this black spider and it bit him on the neck. So I was like, da -da -da, Chrissy to the rescue and I got my kit out and you know, I, I put the thing, it's like a... Like a zapper? As, no, it's kind of like sucks whatever out, oh, it's okay. like a suction okay. thing. Okay. And it just managed to take some kind of fluid. I don't know what the, the thing was, yeah. what if it was a dangerous spider or not, but it was pretty painful. But do you reckon those kits are quite good for... <laughs> I, I, I was a Cub Scout, and of course the motto of the Cub Scouts is be prepared. Yeah. Um, and my logic is if I've got all this stuff, <laughs> there's a good chance I won't need it. Yeah. But I can jolly well guarantee if I haven't got it, I wish I'd have brought it with yeah, me. Yeah. And it, as you say, it doesn't take up much space. No, it was only like a, a small kit like this. I've still got it yeah, actually, yeah. and this was like quite a number of years ago. But you know what? If people, if you actually research the country you're going to, mm. You know, look at the, the website of the country you're going to, they'll tell you the sort of things that you might come into contact with. Yeah. And therefore, you can be prepared. Remember, you know, a lot of times we need to have travel vaccinations as well. Yeah, which I had so, before. Yeah, yeah. so it's, um, but I, I can't imagine that many people 
go through a three week safari and then end up with a spider. Yeah, of, it was the last day, I couldn't believe yeah. it, but it was kind of cool to use that kit because because that was the only time I had it was to use it. Yeah, I think it might have even saved his life, imagine. There you never know. There we are. <laughs> Remind him of it. All right, I will. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much. Really good tips there for the viewers. Thank pleasure. you so, so much. My and we'll pleasure. look forward to seeing you next time. Indeed, thank you. Okay, guys, so do stay tuned because after the break, the lovely Gregoire sisters will be on talking fashion and makeup. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back and now it's time for Cynthia's styling and Megan's makeup. Well, we're going to start with Cynthia first of all. Hello my darling. Hi Chrissy, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm very well. Um, all right, well today's um, fashion segment has a bit of a theme going on and I'd like to talk about a special look that is uh, pretty timeless through the ages and that is of the smoking. So that is all about uh, looking androgynous and using masculine silhouettes and items that would be classically deemed um, masculine on the feminine body. So what I'm going to do is just talk about a few of my inspirations. Um, there's a few images that stick in my mind with this look. Um, one of them is from the 1930s Marlene Dietrich, um, kind of that old school Hollywood glamour. Um, also you have in 1990s, there's a big research of this look with Christy Turlington, Naomi Campbell and Linda Evangelista shot in Italian Vogue by um, Peter Lindbergh. But the image that I'd like to just show you right now is the one that Yves Saint Laurent put out to the world in 1966 and it's this image here. Look of this tuxedo suit on a woman which uh, sort of gave the world the power, women everywhere, to wear the pant and be okay with wearing a pant which was often frowned upon in earlier years. So I'm just going to explain the three looks that I've put together today. I've put together an evening Le Smokin' look, a day Le Smokin' look, and one for maybe the woman that doesn't want to go full-blown tuxedo suit. So I'm going to start with what I've put Chrissy in today. And she is my evening look. And basically I've put her in this rag and bone um, tuxedo uh, blazer. We've paired it with a white shirt. You could do so much with this shirt. You could go with a, say, a ruffled tuxedo shirt. I've put, chose um, a Kentucky tie for a neck piece. Gives it that kind of dandy look. You could do even a black tie, a bow tie. There's so much you can do there. Choose to have your hair just kind of slicked back. Maybe just one strong piece showing. We have her in a, in a more masculine shoe as well, a brogue. And you want to keep the um, jewelry pretty minimalistic. She's got black studs and a beautiful um, statement ring. And um, so that's your look. Thank you. How do you feel? I love it. it. Yeah, How I really didn't, think? wasn't sure about it when you were telling me, but I actually really love it. I love yeah. it on you as well. You carry that look very well. Thank you. Okay. Um, for mine, I did a more relaxed day look, and I've put myself in a navy tuxedo tr um, trouser suit by Maj. And um, I've paired it with some vintage ballet pumps by Chanel. So basically you have these like satin uh, lapels, you've got the satin detailing on the trouser. It's all about, uh, you wanna go for a more cropped trouser um, silhouette and it's all about showing a little bit of ankle. I went for a low round neck t-shirt with a print on it, just keeping it casual. And then I put like just some simplistic chains and um, also simplistic chain bracelets as well. And uh, hats are huge. Hat is classically a masculine item, but uh, very hot for autumn, winter, 14, and it just really completes this look. Um, for those of us who maybe don't want to do the full um, Le Smokin' look, I've put my sister in sort of a hybrid of the two, mixing both feminine and masculine shapes. So I've put her in a pair of shorts. I've put them, uh, these are done by Essential. And then we have tights and stilettos, which give it that feminine look. I've also paired it with a uh, lace top, which is also very feminine, but then topped it with a black leather jacket by All Saints. So again, giving it that more masculine edge to it. We've deliberately slicked back the hair, parted it on the side and pulled it back in a bun. So if you're not uh, confident with going for the full tuxedo, suit look, you can definitely mix and match uh, masculine and feminine items. Just play around with it and find your own style. 
And just to wrap up, I was just going to uh, mention that accessories always do so much to a look. And uh, don't forget the sunglasses, perhaps put on a fedora. There's, it make, changes the whole look. We've got Max Mara sunglasses, we've got Chrissy and Tom Ford, and uh, Megan and Chloe. So let's put on those and just look fierce. It's all about looking fierce and strong, confident women. Okay, thank you so much, Cynthia. So let's move over now to Megan with her makeup. Should we take the sunglasses off, do you think? <laughs> I like I these glasses. <laughs> thank I you so do. much. Okay, so now we're going to talk some few tips about makeup, aren't we? Yes, and so speaking about confidence, let's bring that confidence to our ability to apply lipstick mm -hmm. and even choose a lipstick. I feel really short compared to you. I've got flat on and she's got these... Okay, I'm just going to tiptoe. <laughs> I've got some really <laughs> high heels. So first off, um, before we apply our lipstick or mm -hmm. even our lip gloss, we want to have that freshly polished palette. So, you know, before anything, let's make sure that we don't have that loose, dry skin. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you get rid of that? There's lots of natural ways to do that. One's olive oil and sugar. Oh, yeah. Okay. So even if you ingested it, if, you know, it's, it's natural food products, mm. it's not toxic, it's very safe. So um, also a, a way to do it is if you're brushing your teeth and um, you know, maybe um, you just lightly, if you have an electric toothbrush, mm -hmm. brush through, obviously if you have more, um, you know, more excessive skin that you might want to use an old toothbrush and okay. petroleum jelly is another combo. So mm -hmm. loads of things. I'm just gonna um, go to a first um, slide to just show me actually putting on lip liner. Okay. So this lip liner, it's very important about when you're putting on lip liner, a, trip, um, a trick is the Cupid's bow. If you put an X on the top there, so you can see I'm doing an X, so it will go straight down and straight down. So that's, that's a tip. Mm -hmm. Also that um, you wear a, a liner for a reason and the the reason is so your lip pigment stays in doesn't bleed also if you put a lip liner on which um, I have a lip liner here so you could just see you can fill in the lip and actually have it stay once the top layer is worn off right. because you've put a liner on and so then the on lipstick the outside, but actually it will have lips. that stain in color okay. so another thing is let's say you don't have a lip liner well, there's also a lip liner brush. How would you get that to actually become your eyeliner pencil when you don't have one? And one of the tips is to actually load the lipstick on the lip brush quite generously mm -hmm. so that when you are doing a liner on the outside that it is quite... Um, yeah defined because the less the um, product you have on your brush if you have a lip if you are using a lip liner brush then the wider and less accurate your strokes are going to be mm -hmm. so some people even for a more natural look they will actually go and put the liner on just after just to frame it Right, so, okay. you know, w mostly when you have highly pigmented colors, like a bright orange, you'd want to then make sure that, you know, the top of the cupid's bow has um, those little parts of, um, of the lip filled in okay. so that it doesn't look, you know, kind of clowny or messy, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. So that is um, a bright red lipstick. So people, um, they, they want to know which color of red. So I've went and, and just gathered a few tips on if you're fair skinned, that you would like the cherry reds. Mm -hmm. If you're medium skinned, then um, you can go to um, a different um, kind of uh, deeper red. And then dark skin, black skin, you can still go red. Red is one of the most versatile and that's a, a genuine misconception. Um, red lipstick, actually, it bridges all ages and culture. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, the, it's a timeless color and the red lip is very important for people not to think you know, that they can't wear it, they can. Mm -hmm. And it's just about choosing and finding the help. Right of yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the next slide. So 
Here I've got um, two times, so you want to find a liner that's two tones darker than your lip. So oh. you can see here um, two tones on the girl's lips. Um, you know, on the right you can see a dark brown and uh, the middle of her lip is that lighter pink. And if you go to the next slide, you can see how, you know, you don't have to choose uh, red. You can choose a natural color. And Bobbi Brown said that if she had to teach someone one thing about lip color, it would be to find a lipstick that looks good on your face when you're wearing no makeup at all. So you can mm. see the natural lipstick. You want to go two tones darker than your natural lip color. And that's usually the most complimentary yeah. um, for that natural look. And so do we have another slide? So then we can see. Shane Redmond at the Rye Castle Museum and he's going to be telling us a bit about the history. Hello Shane, how are you? Hello, fine, thank you. Yes, uh, well of course uh, it's part of the defences of Rye built in 1247 by Henry III or with money provided by Henry III and it, uh, as I say, was accommodation for the garrison and it remained as part of the defences of Rye until the 1400s. At the end of that, um, it served as one or two other uh, purposes in the town, but eventually it became the town goal. Uh, and it remained as such uh, right up until 1890. And we used to get approximately 18 prisoners in the six cells, which was a bit crowded, until Elizabeth Fry, on the back of our five pound note, came along, uh, Prison Reform Act, 1835-37, we built the Woman's Tower and we moved the girls out. Uh, much better accommodation was in here in the uh, tower itself. It's uh, open right the way through the year and we get a, a very varied uh, cross-section of the population, not only people from the United Kingdom but all over the world. Japanese, Chinese, New Zealanders, Australians, Americans, Canadians. They've all been through here at some time in this year, let alone last year. And what's your personal interest in this place as well? Does it have a special meaning for you? Um, well, I'm on the management committee of the association that runs it. It's purely a volunteer system here. Um, and uh, I'm just one of the volunteers that happen to look after the um, tower itself, this part of it. There is of course a museum in East Street, but um, I'm, for my sins, lumbered with the tower. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. Oh, Thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank you very much. And before we go back to Excel, I'm just going to answer this question from Ashanti. She says, Hi Chrissy, I have a very good friend, but every time we talk, she misunderstands what I say and even mean. Recently we were talking and she was telling me a story about something that happened and now I can see that she does this very often. But what is disturbing is that she cannot see it and she always puts it down to being tired or that her mind is on something else. I have tried to make her aware of this but it did not go down very well. What would you do, Chrissy? Now, Ashanti, first of all, I think um, I would look at myself first. I would make sure that I was actually expressing myself properly, 
Maybe she misunderstands because you don't explain things well. So I would ask her in a calm way, what did you think I meant by that? How could I have explained myself better? Now, once you're sure that the problem isn't on your side, I think you need to have an open and honest talk with her, not accusing her in any way, but just say that you care about her as a friend and you want to help her. If she doesn't change, then you need to make a decision. No friend is perfect and some have some strange ways sometimes. So the question is, are you willing to overlook your friend's mistakes, especially if she has loads of other good qualities? Or is it something that's making you so miserable that it would be better to part ways and only you can actually answer that? So I hope that's helped. And if you guys at home have a question for me, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Again. <laughs> And I continue with my wonderful news, yes, even if I say so myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I thought I'd um, give us a bit of a, a bit of a soppy story, really. Um, newlyweds, um, Amy Maiden and Nick Wheeler, had a unique blast from the past when they were looking through their childhood photos before they got married, mm. just before their big day. They discovered an old beach photo from 1994, and they were amazed to see themselves playing just yards apart. Oh, you're joking. In the same photo. Oh my photo. gosh, that's I so mean, romantic. I mean, it was, it was just li literally so ridiculous. Like, he was, I think he was the guy that was in front. We have the photo. Oh, it was, see. He was see. He was in front on the beach while she was behind him, and it was just literally yards apart from each other. So in the they're the ones that are circled there. So the boy is the one in front, and she's the one at the back. And she oh actually gosh. recognized herself because she saw the photo, as in Amy saw the photo in Nick's house, yeah. because I think it was the grandfather who had taken it. And so they were looking through the family photos, and Amy recognized and said, oh, that's me in the back. Oh, God, so, that's so sweet. Can you imagine? Wow. And it was, it was actually um, quite funny because um, they, Nick's family didn't move to Cornwall, which is somewhere... Um, it's a place called, um, oh gosh, it's called, yeah, Mouse Hole. I knew the name was a bit of a <laughs> funny name. Mouse Hole, the, the town is called. And this is them now having gotten Aww. married as well um, fairly recently. And they got married not quite far from the spot. The previous picture showed almost exactly the same spot where they yeah. sat. So this is them. Oh, yeah, as, so as, as a, It was just absolutely so lovely. And they, and they moved down, Nick's family moved down to the area about a year after that photo was taken. Mm. But they didn't see each other then. They only met each other when they went to... I think when they went to a college together, yeah, after their college years, around their college years, they, they sort of fell oh, in love in six, before their college years, rather, be, they fell in love in be. sixth form, I know, <laughs> so lovely. And moving on from that, um, in the same theme, really, is um, we all know the love stories and how we see the whole romantic, rom all the rom-coms or all the deep, wonderful romantic stories. And um, we know The Notebook, and the mm. famous Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams who featured in it. In the notebook, I mean, we know about the whole, I'm not gonna bore the, especially our male viewers who go, oh yeah, we've got another rom-com. But anyway, <laughs> for us, those who, knows the, who know the notebook, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, they kind of clutch in the rain and it's all, oh, it's just dramatic. And realistic. And so, yeah, you see, this is a shot. It's so wonderful and fabulous. Did you know they actually hated each other's guts? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Apparently, it, it, was, it was hilarious when I saw this, apparently um, Gosling actually wanted a director to replace McAdams with another actress after shooting began because he just, they were screaming at each other apparently on set constantly. <laughs> really? They absolutely, yeah, it was, it was a shock. When I saw it, I was like, what? They couldn't stand each other. Another one, the good old fashioned, you know, love story we all know mm. with the whole somebody flying in the air. What is it? Superman. No, the, well, the woman in the air held Superwoman? by a man. No. Oh, Spider-Man. No. Oh, I don't know. Dirty dancing. Oh, uh, you said flying. Well, I didn't I said, fly. Oh, well, she was kind of suspended in the air. Oh, right. they yeah, hate each other. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Patrick so Swayze. Nice. Apparently, they shot a film before that, and um, Jennifer Grey was not impressed with him at that previous movie. And Patrick Swayze, he literally had to beg her to feature on Dirty Dancing really? with him. Because she didn't, wasn't impressed with him at a previous movie they did together. And they literally had to, apparently they had emotional moments where she would cry and she would just burst into tears. And Patrick Swayze was just like, seriously, she was hard work. But mm, who oh. would have known? Who would have known? Well, I had that picture, but the, the screen, cyber dog you? ate my picture. But um, in another movie, an act, um, what do you call it? The Officer and Gentleman with Richard Gere, Apparently, Richard Gere and Deborah Winger did not like each other. 
I mean, I have a shot of them here. This is a perfect shot because this picture looks like they're fighting. <laughs> but again, we know about the whole how he carries her off into the sunset. But um, nah, nothing like that in real life, apparently. No, and, well, uh, this, is, this is the thing I was just going to say to the ladies. Ladies, don't compare your man to what you see in rom-coms because the rom-coms aren't real. Men aren't really like that, or very few are like that. So don't give him a hard time and say, but you're not like the guys in the films and you're not romantic. Just love him for what he is and who he is, girls, because, you know, it's all lies. <laughs> it's all lies. I'm sorry to have to... Breaking news. <laughs> My but husband's he, what, romantic in his own way, you know. Yeah, He's not he, romantic in the... You know, the, the, in the scripted, yeah, the scripted <laughs> way, but he's romantic in other ways, the way he looks after me. Absolutely, so. absolutely. But even if he is like that sometimes, there's sometimes you also disagree, and I think that's I would the find it that's soppy, not... actually, if he was too much. Like, oh, well. <laughs> just behave. All right, sorry. You were well, I have, I have a, one more story too. Um, well, another one if we have time for, for another as well. But I have this really cute story. A husband and a wife had triplets. They've had triplets. This is in Wales. And they... Don't, they can't tell them apart, apparently. They're three girls. <laughs> Their names are Fionn. I'm very sorry, our Welsh viewers, if I don't know how to say these names properly, it's but so it's cute. Fionn, Madison and Paige. And mm -hmm. I can't tell who's who in this picture, obviously. If the parents can't, well, who am I? Well, how do they know which is which anymore? Because if they stamp them or something? Let the next picture tell you. Oh. <laughs> are you serious? Oh, yes. Fionn has her toenail polish. Mm -hmm. um, uh, painted fuchsia, Madison has her toes painted a mint green, and Paige has her toes painted purple. They're going to have to find another way because no varnish comes off. Well, this is it, but hopefully they kind of stick it on for a bit. It's I think they painted two toes, yeah, they painted <laughs> the, two, the two big toes. So it's literally a case of having them to work out a daily routine of changing and all sorts and feeding. So. Thank you so much, my darling Excel. You're and very we'll welcome. see you again next time. Thank you for the lovely news. Okay, folks, so we have reached the end of today's program. And I do hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. If you want more information about the program, you can visit the website, chriscbshow.tv. And if you'd like to visit the Facebook page, if you haven't liked it yet, you can do so. And it's The Chrissy B Show. I'd just like to leave you with something before we go. None of us are perfect. And so we shouldn't expect anyone else to be perfect either. Try changing the way you see other people. Overlook their flaws and concentrate on all the lovely qualities they have instead. And you'll find out your relationships with others will improve greatly. See you again next time. Bye-bye for now.